The objective of this topic is to develop a technical understanding of the welding characteristics of aluminum and its alloys in the Aluminum Association designation system with regard to their main alloying elements, weldability, and applications. You will find that it is important to become familiar with aluminum because of its unusual properties and different welding requirements and because it is used widely throughout the manufacturing industry. Aluminum is one of the few metals that isn't mined. It does not exist naturally like iron, gold, or silver. Rather, it is a product of bauxite ore, which can be found in almost every shovelful of earth throughout the world. Through an electrolytic process, bauxite ore is refined into a compound known as alumina, which is further refined into pure aluminum. Although aluminum has a number of valuable properties, it is best known for its light weight and high strength. A single pound of aluminum is three times larger than the same amount of steel. Its tensile strength is also very changeable. By cold working the metal, its tensile strength can be increased from the normal 13,000 pounds per square inch to 26,000. This can be increased even further to nearly 100,000 pounds per square inch by alloying, heat treating, cold working, and aging. Metals commonly alloyed with aluminum are magnesium, manganese, zinc, copper, and silicon. Aluminum is durable. Under most conditions, parts made from aluminum will resist the destructive effects of corrosion, unlike parts manufactured from iron or steel. A tough oxide coating forms quickly on exposed aluminum surfaces, sealing off the air and protecting the underlying metal like a self-repairing, self-limiting transparent shield. Rather than being harmful to the metal, like rust is to steel, it acts as a natural preservative. However, even with this protective shield, aluminum will corrode if exposed to strong alkalines such as lye. Also, contact with copper or iron under moist conditions will cause a type of corrosion called galvanic corrosion, which is electrical in nature. Though valuable as a corrosion inhibitor, oxide must be removed prior to welding or it will contaminate and weaken the weld. Aluminum is a good conductor of heat and electricity. The conduction rate is three times faster than for steel and is second only to copper. This property is useful for the manufacture of heat exchangers and many household cooking utensils. However, pure aluminum has a comparatively low melting point of 1218 degrees Fahrenheit and must be alloyed for use in higher temperature applications. Two special properties make aluminum very valuable for electrical applications. Although its conductivity rate is 62% that of electrical grade copper, one pound of aluminum will go twice as far as copper when producing a conductor and it is less expensive. For these reasons, aluminum has replaced copper in many applications such as long distance power lines, welding cables, and transformer wiring. Aluminum is often alloyed with various metals to produce properties especially suited for a particular application. These alloys use the Aluminum Association numbering system for identifying the various alloying elements and metal properties. This is important because an aluminum billet marked 1100 may look just like a billet marked 4043, but the numbers indicate that they have quite different properties. The numbering system has been standardized so that the first digit indicates the major alloying element. The second digit indicates modifications to the original alloy, such as heat treating or cold working. And the last two digits identify the specific alloy content or degree of aluminum purity. There are eight major series of aluminum alloys, and they are given a numerical designation according to the most important alloying metal in the mixture. By understanding the numbering system, you can determine that the look-alike aluminum billets we saw earlier are different from each other in composition. The one marked 1100 is unalloyed 99% pure aluminum. 
Only in the 1000 series alloys do the last two digits represent the exact percentage of pure aluminum. An alloy marked 1187 contains 99 and 87 hundredths percent pure aluminum. The billet marked 4043 is aluminum alloyed with silicon. The last two digits indicate the alloying element and not the percentage of aluminum. Since aluminum can be manufactured in a variety of strengths, a standardized system of suffixes are added to the end of the four-digit classification to represent the strength of the material. An O suffix indicates an alloy in the annealed state, which is the softest temper. An F suffix means that the material has not received any additional strengthening other than work hardening during its original manufacture. Aluminum with an H suffix are non-heat treatable alloys and are strengthened by strain hardening or cold working. On the other hand, T suffix alloys are heat treatable in order to increase hardness or other properties as desired. The eight major aluminum alloy series are generally divided into two groups, heat treatables and non-heat treatables. Those alloys which cannot be heat treated for extra strength are the 1000, 3000, 4000, and 5000 series. These are all identified by the H suffix. In order to increase strength in these alloys, it is necessary to cold work the material. Looking at each of these series, the 1000 alloys are great conductors of electricity and are frequently used in electrical applications because they are easily welded and brazed. The 3000s are general purpose alloys of moderate strength and good workability, also easy to weld or braze. The 4000 series contain enough silicon to decrease the melting point without causing the melted alloy to become brittle after it rehardens. This makes them especially useful as brazing and welding filler metals. The high strength 5000 series is used to fabricate heavy industrial implements such as railroad gondolas and concrete mixes. Magnesium is added to the aluminum to create high strength and for additional strength many 5000 series alloys contain manganese as well as magnesium. The 5000 series alloys account for the greatest amount of aluminum fusion welding as they are not weldable with other processes such as resistance and laser. The heat treatable group contains the 2000, 6000 and 7000 series alloys which contain copper, magnesium, silicon and zinc to gain initial strength. This strength factor can be greatly increased by controlled heat treatments. Because of its high strength, the 2000 series is often referred to as aircraft alloys. Having copper as its main ingredient, this series can be heat treated to a point matching the strength of low carbon steel. Due to its composition, the 2000 series can be resistance welded, but fusion welding is not recommended. On the other hand, the 6000 series alloys can be welded with all processes. Good formability and corrosion resistance is obtained through the addition of magnesium and silicon to the aluminum. These alloys are used to fabricate bridge and highway railings, even though they lack the strength of the 2000 series. The 7000 series has the greatest strength and hardness of all because of the addition of zinc. However, this makes the alloy unsuitable for fusion welding. To increase weldability, magnesium can be added to the aluminum-zinc mixture. The major use of the 7000 alloys is in aircraft construction and the fabrication of armor plating. Although aluminum has highly desirable properties and numerous applications, it can be difficult to weld because of low melting point high rate of thermal conductivity and surface oxides. Allowances must be made for heat buildup through the control of amperage settings and travel speed in order to prevent problems such as melt through. In addition, 
the oxide coating must be thoroughly cleaned off prior to welding since it easily combines with hydrogen in the air to produce moisture and resulting troubles with porosity. During welding, the solidifying aluminum can shrink as much as 60% and is often the cause of cracking. Cracking can be prevented by preheating the joint, increasing travel speed, and cooling the weld pool. Where permissible, the joint may even be deliberately misaligned so that shrinkage will force the members back into their correct position. As the demand for aluminum products increases, it is vital that you have a thorough understanding of the unique properties of the metal. Producing quality welds on aluminum involves correct techniques and careful consideration of the properties of the particular alloys you will be welding. However, once familiar with the procedures for welding aluminum, you can produce quality work with the same assurance as with steel.